Hello guys, it's uh, good to be back. And you know, I know I look very disheveled and grunge right now, but you know, cut me a little bit of slack because we are in the middle of the zombie apocalypse after all. And on a more serious note, I understand a lot of people are worried about the coronavirus and you know, the effect that it's having on our daily lives. And I hope that none of that has interfered with your daily struggles in the fight against hair loss and good health in general. So You've all heard about what to do in the fight against the coronavirus, but just to reinforce the importance of what health professionals are already saying, I just want to stress that everybody take the following precautions, you know, make sure you avoid large congregations, don't go out in public unless it's for acquiring necessities like groceries and medicine, uh, avoid contact with other individuals, make sure you keep a bottle of hand sanitizer with you, and regularly wash your hands after touching the surfaces of areas other people may have come in contact with, and you know, remember, don't listen to conspiracy theory promoting dickless morons on social media who say that the coronavirus is a liberal hoax to try to hurt Donald Trump's re-election bid. You know, I was actually, uh, don't ask me why, but I was watching uh, Fox News and I heard this uh, one lady, you know, I could barely understand her because she had Donald Trump's balls on her chin, but she was like whining about how, oh, this is all exaggerated. This is designed to hurt Donald Trump's re-election bid. I mean, this is just such irresponsible journalism. I don't even know if I want to call it journalism. It's just uh, flat out propaganda and it's really despicable because they're putting politics ahead of the well-being and health of the general public. So I just uh, want to make sure that everybody is wary to avoid uh, people who put the political career of the president above the health of uh, the American people and also just people across the world because this is a, ban a pandemic we're talking about after all. And also just remember that you can still be asymptomatic and still spread the virus. So be especially mindful not to get too close to people who are especially at high risk of death and respiratory damages such as the elderly, diabetics, uh, smokers, uh, people with COPD. I mean, even if you don't have any of those uh, risk factors, chances are you know someone who has one of those risk factors. So everybody just be very careful and, you know, don't panic or anything. And, you know, we're going to get through this together. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about uh, the subject at hand for today. And that is uh, castor oil. So is castor oil an effective hair growth treatment? And you know, I've been meaning to go over this and I want to go over this because there are a lot of products in the market that contain castor oil. Uh, many of them are marketed as hair growth remedies. In fact, I think Old Spice even released a product recently that I see on the shelves, which is marketed as uh, hair growth promoting treatment, specifically because of its active ingredient, which is castor oil. Uh, so before I answer whether any of that works, let's go ahead and look at the science behind all this. Let's go ahead and look at the theory behind castor oil and its alleged role as a hair growth promoter. So, so the reason why castor oil is supposed to work as a hair growth stimulant is because it is an inhibitor of uh, prostaglandin D2. And the theory is that prostaglandin D2 levels are elevated in the scalps of individuals who are bald, and thus there must be a correlation between elevated prostaglandin D2 levels and hair loss, and therefore inhibiting it with castor oil, either topically or orally, it may actually work to promote hair growth. So what are prostaglandins? Uh, prostaglandins are similar to hormones and they work to regulate inflammation and blood flow to certain tissues. So to give you an example of a mechanism of a prostaglandin, aspirin works as a prostaglandin inhibitor in order to reduce inflammation in the body. So that's a very basic example of it. And they affect the smooth uh, muscle tissues of the body. And for those who don't know what the smooth muscles are, smooth muscles are the uh, tissues that we don't have voluntary control over. Uh, so those would include muscles that control digestion, vascular function, and uh, uterine function. And for that reason, uh, prostaglandin-based medications are often used to induce labor in women too. So uh, a prostaglandin D2, let's just call it B PGD2, is just one of the many prostaglandins, and it is one that just so happens to be elevated in the scalp, scalp of bald people. So uh, there are several studies linking PGD2 and hair loss, and I'll link them down below in the description. Uh, but basically, these are just animal studies, and nobody has done a study on humans, at least extensively. So breaking down uh, this the, the big study that I found, uh, the active ingredient in castor oil is ricinoleic acid. And that sounds like ricin, because ricin, which is a chemical weapon, is extracted from uh, the castor bean as well. So it is a, what is a ricinoleic acid? It is an unsaturated fat, fatty acid and it has been shown in animal studies to inhibit the uh, prostaglandin D2 synthesis. So the study looked at the scalps of five men 
and compared balding regions with non-balding regions on the scalp of each one of those men. So this is a very small study, which I think it is important to point out. But in any case, they happen to find out that more PG2 activity was happening in the bald regions compared to the regions with hair. And that is pretty much the closest thing we have to a study showing a link between castor oil and hair growth. So this is all very highly theoretical, and there isn't nearly enough evidence to draw the conclusion that castor oil is an effective treatment for hair loss based on this study. So this doesn't prove that castor oil is bunk either, but it does. But if we, you know, if we want to establish a definitive link between castor oil and hair growth, we would need to assess it first in both animals, uh, both orally and topically, because it's possible it doesn't even work topically. And in the case of oral castor oil, it probably wouldn't even matter if it worked because oral castor oil cannot be used long term as a treatment due to its strong laxative effects on the human organism unless people decide growing hair is worth having diarrhea every day with. I mean, you could even buy uh, castor oil over the counter where it's marketed as a laxative and it's actually a pretty effective laxative. So it's not something I'd want to use uh, every day. I mean, me personally, I'd rather just take finasteride and I already do. So what would we need to do to prove that castor oil actually works? So what kind of study would we need? We would need a randomized placebo control human study with a sizable sample cohort. So unfortunately, we're not likely to see a pharmaceutical company fund such a study because castor oil is a natural product that has been around for centuries. You know, chances are it was even marketed as a hair loss remedy by one of those like uh, swindlers uh, who would, you know, come in with like their their miracle elixirs and just swindle the whole town out of their money uh, back in like the uh, the old days of like snake oil salesmen. And because it's a natural treatment that's been around for a long time, it can't be patented by any drug company. So there's very little chance that any pharmaceutical company is going to uh, fund one of these very ex uh, expensive uh, studies uh, proving the efficacy behind the claim. So I have nothing against anybody who wants to try things out for themselves. But, you know, for me personally, I would want to risk my hair on something that is unproven and overly theoretical when we have so many proven effective pharmaceutical alternatives that we know work, like, you know, for, uh, finasteride and minoxidil. And, you know, I will say there are anecdotal reports that castor oil improves the luster of the hair, indicating that it is a good conditioner. And, you know, it's found in a lot of shampoo products and uh, a high quality shampoo products that I've used. And, you know, it's also said that it can fight dandruff effectively. So it's possible that it is good for the hair cosmetically while not actually fighting male pattern baldness. So there's no harm in giving it a try, but I wouldn't recommend doing so thinking that it's a viable replacement for proven hair loss treatments like finasteride and minoxidil. So in conclusion, and this is a very short video simply just because there's not that much evidence that's out there, not enough quality evidence that's out there in favor for, in favor of castor oil. I mean, so in conclusion, I think that castor oil is pretty benign. Uh, so it can't hurt, but I think you'd be really crazy to think that it could be used as a substitute for a legitimate pharmaceutical treatment like finasteride or rinoxidil. And, you know, I understand not everybody can use finasteride which prompts people to seek out these alternative treatments to begin with, like castor oil. But even in that context, there are several alternatives to finasteride that exist that I've gone over before, such as alpha tradiol. You have CB0301, which is going to be available um, as Brazula um, by a prescription pretty soon. There's experimentals like RU5841. There's Flirtal, which is obscure. It's only available in Slovakia and the Czech Republic, but that's uh, comparable to alpha tradiol, I'd say. And those are some amongst others that uh, that you can take as an alternative finasteride. So I'd really um, uh, caution against uh, using uh, castor oil, expecting it to actually help you win the battle against uh, male pattern baldness. I mean, if you do, then good luck. I mean, heaven forbid you're going to need it. So uh, I would really not risk using something that's promoted by a bunch of like anti-vax yoga moms who receive their education at the Whole Foods book section. And you see castor oil being promoted by like uh, new age woo practitioners. So that alone would make uh, me pretty skeptical, uh, uh, skeptical about using it. So, you know, that's all I wanted to say about uh, castor oil. I mean, go ahead and try it if you want to. But remember, like you don't really get second chances with uh, hair loss. Once your hair is gone, it's gone for good unless you want to get a really expensive 
of hair transplant. And even in that case, you have to take risks with like, you know, finding the right kind of doctor or anything. And, you know, even if you find a really good doctor, chances are they won't be able to make your uh, previous hairline look as good as your natural hairline. So really the golden option is not to lose your hair to begin with. And the best way to do that is by getting on legitimate treatments as quickly as possible. So since time is of the essence, you don't want to waste your time with these unproven theoretical treatments. So anyways, I hope everybody's as having a great week in light of these, uh, this coronavirus catastrophe that's happening. Uh, I hope everybody stays safe and I will be back with more content soon. All right, take care.